Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTuber. I'm still here in Sydney at the Matrix Technical Centre, but today I'm with Kelsey. Um, and Sam's going to be here a little bit later to do her uh, shape on the hair, so she'll be doing the cutting and then I'll be doing the styling. So again, we're doing the collaboration, it's going to be fun. Ready to get started? Ready. You've got to give everyone a big thumbs up. Ready? Go. Ready. <laughs> you guys can probably tell that Kelsey's never had colour in her hair. So let's talk about that because it's very important. When someone comes to the salon for the first time to have colour, as a hairdresser, I would like to say to you guys, you need to respect that process. The first time in salon is gonna dictate how they feel for probably ever really. For me, I like to start gentle. So today, because I think blonde and lighter tones will work with Kelsey's skin and eye colour, we're just gonna start to lighten it out a little bit. We're not gonna go and make her blonde, like per se, but I want to actually work with some, bringing some lightness in around here, especially around the face, and then we just um, leave the top alone and put uh, lightness underneath. Because for the first time, it's going to grow up better when we don't have a regrowth, or we don't put falls in and they're going to give a regrowth. And I want Kelsey to love me forever and keep coming back and having hair done. So if I go too hard, say so if I go from zero to ten, she might like freak out and like that's a lot and it might be a while before I see her so I'm going to get somewhere around the five or six I wanted to feel like she's had colour, that she's had a change it feels different but not put her in an uncomfortable place but the reality is with all change is you're going to have to explain to your client you're going to feel a little bit uncomfortable because it's new and it's different but that's okay that's all a part of the process so I'm going to give myself some lightener first we're going to get uh, make sure she's light master with bonner inside I'm going to use 20 volt because it's gentle and we'll talk about tone later but the most important thing for me is placement. So as I said, uh, frame the face, some color underneath, and so that when Sam shapes the hair later on, when it moves around, you'll be able to see some of that color coming through. So we'll be back and see. Let's talk about placement. I'm gonna start in the back. Let me spin Kelsey around. Lay them uh, horizontally, and I'm gonna weave them really gently. And then once I come to occipital bone, I'm gonna stop. Then we're gonna start doing them horizontally above the ear, and then we're just gonna do some in the front uh, to frame the face. So I'm going to go and mix up some colour and then I'll be back. Kelsey's back, and this is really hard for me to do, right? Because as you are all aware, when I started HairTube, it was all about haircuts and about how I cut hair. And I've got a level of anxiety, well, separation anxiety, really, because I've coloured Kelsey's hair, so I hope you guys like the colour when you see dry. But I want to see how Sam would approach a haircut like this. I know it's completely different, so I'm actually really excited about seeing what she does. And I'm so, nervous to cut in front of all of you guys that are used to seeing Adam cut. I actually just said to something I'm to a bit, Adam. I'm a bit goofy. Off camera, I'm and I'm going to repeat it to everybody else because I don't think Adam actually realises how special he is at cutting hair. Oh, shocks. And how simple, talking to Adam about his haircuts over the last couple of days, he really talks it. He just talks like it just comes so natural to him. And I'm a very It didn't used cutter, to come natural, which, I can tell you exactly. that. Exactly, and you, you've worked on that for years and years and years. And I just think it's so great to be collaborating over the last few days because I've learned so much from him being here in person as opposed to, to watching. So um, talk so. to me about once you've, once you've cut Kelsey's hair, how would you normally style it? Because I'm gonna, like you did the other day, I'm gonna use a particular technique I used to style long hair. So how would you normally do Would you blow dry this hair cut? In the salon, yeah, I'd blow dry it. And I'd do like a smaller brush and a wavy blow dry and probably different directions to enhance the kind of natural texture in the hair. Mm. Um, and also mimic what Kelsey would be wearing it like at home, which is very much wash and wear. All right, well, I'll leave you guys with Sam. She's going to cut your hair. I'm going to go out there and have something to eat. And then when she's done, she'll holler. I'll come back and I'll be styling it. Uh, Fun. <laughs> bye. 
Um, I'm super excited to be uh, to be getting into this haircut. So the lovely Kelsey and I have had a chat about what we're doing with hair today. We have decided that out of all this long hair, I'm allowed to cut just a little bit shorter. These parts through the front, we're gonna have some nice little bangs that kind of sit around cheekbone, in between cheek and lips today. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of this length kept. What are you doing? Adam's here just to make me nervous today. <laughs> So basically we're going to keep majority of the length and we're just going to come in here with a little solid form and, and take probably just an inch off today. I'm going to start with uh, up here in the crown and then we're going to take that literally around the head. So very different to Adam. It's going to be well, actually not so much Adam. I was just thinking about this when you were cutting. They're triangle sections so th there's still a bit of structure in there, right? <laughs> we're about to find out. Okay. And you know what? It's not about doing it like me, it's about doing it like you. Exactly. And I'm going to sit over here, not as the headmaster, but because I want a good vantage. All right, all right. So I'm very, very simple in here. We're just going to split this hair in half and do a little inch off the bottom and get our guideline started first. The reason I like to work with my guideline, my, my bottom perimeter, first is so that I know where I'm taking my layers to and when I start to choose how short I want them I can see exactly where I've got to go. If you're just going to trim the ends up after then it's not so much a big deal but if you're taking a little bit of length off I like to start with that. All right, so we've gone through and taken off our overall length of the haircut. And now we're gonna start working on that interior layer. And like I said, we're not gonna take the layers too short and we want them to move really nicely, create a bit of texture within the haircut because Kelsey does like to wear her hair um, naturally wavy and wash and wear type of haircut. So we're gonna start by taking little pie sections from the middle of the head. Now, something really important when you part the, the front and the back of the head, it's always about looking at where that head starts to round. Because if you layer in the wrong place, you're gonna re rely on those layers to fall where you're cutting them, and then they're not gonna happen if, that, if that's not correct. So try and make sure you're really getting that right where you're sectioning your front and back of the head. Then we want a neat little triangle or pie section in through here, center of the head. Kelsey's hair is drying extremely quickly. I'm going to get that out of the way so you can see what we're doing. And through here. And we're going to just have a little bit of a look at where we want our layering to start. So just dropping that down and kind of going, and this can start anywhere. You can come as short as you like, or you can go as long as you like, as long as you've got enough experience with the way we're going to do this to know how much length to leave. So we're going to come probably halfway through the haircut in around here and, and see quite a bit of layering because it will be quite soft. And another way to look at that is uh, just dropping it down when you kind of come through here like this. Now we're going to lift you at 90. I'm just going to do a little check around there, bring it down a little bit more so we know we're about there. And we're going to use the very bottom of our scissor and we're just going to put it in through there, lift the finger out the way and open and close just a little bit at the bottom of the scissor and as I do that, slide my hand away. Now, once I've done that, 
I just want to have a little look at that section and look at what the hair is naturally doing. So I can see that, I can see where the layers are starting and that's what I'm, I'm looking to check. And I'm happy with where they are, so we take half of that section and we move on to the next one. Now, as Adam was asking me before, yes, this is not exactly a strong guideline to where you're gonna be cutting every time, but I guess that's kind of the point with this haircut. I don't do it on everyone, but when they've got this much natural movement in their hair and they want it to fall really naturally, then that, this, I love this technique because it gives me a little bit less weight when I come in afterwards and start styling the hair. So again, we're gonna hold this up at around 90. Just make sure you've got enough of your guide. And it's not about following the line exactly the way down. If you move your scissor at the same rate every time you take a section, then that will show you exactly, all you need to look at is, is where you're starting. Find our guide for a second. All right, and there's my guide right here. So I'm stopping there, and then I'm moving that finger past, seeing it with my scissor, and working my way all the way out again. All right, I'm probably not gonna talk anymore. Just gonna cut. Stringy. Those little ends will feel a lot better. I'm just going to swivel you around a little bit, honey, so I can see. So what we can see here is that we're not seeing a really strong line of where the layers start and stop or how they continue down, but we can definitely see how much texture we've managed to put into the hair by doing that. We don't have yeah, a lot of weight line and we've certainly removed a lot of the bulk from the bottom and given her a lot more texture to play with in through there. So we're gonna go ahead and do that on the other side. So I've gone through and done the other side there. Now all I'm gonna do is take some vertical sections from top to bottom, just so we can make sure we're just connecting where those layers have stopped to the bottom. So let's come through this way so you can see me. Just gonna keep it nice and low because we don't really wanna take off much weight. Just gonna just see that little corner, just blend that through. And 
And all that's doing is just removing a little bit of weight that was sitting in through there where nothing had been cut between the perimeter and where we finished sliding out of that layer. And then if you didn't notice, where we were taking our top section to was just above the occipital because I didn't want to bring that down too much and reduce the weight that we keep in our baseline. Obviously, the further you bring that down, the more you're going to lose that line in the bottom. We need to make sure, because we've already cut our baseline, that we retain that. So here's the back. You can see we've got a lot of texture starting to happen in there. And when she wears that naturally, that's what she's going to start to see. A lot of long and short and not a lot of weight to it. So on our sides, let's turn you a little bit this way, lovely actually. We're just going to continue that sectioning, but we're going to swap from pie sections to just vertic vertical sections through here. And as I mentioned before, how far I come down with my section basically decides how much layering I'm putting into the hair and how much weight we're keeping in the baseline. And you can see from, from here that that baseline is quite fine. So what I like to do is not go too far down through the head here and not past the, the roundest part. Looking at that, it's pretty short to be able to take that round to the side. So instead of actually bringing this through here, we're gonna take the side section back because I don't wanna bring that much shortness into the front section. There we are. So we've got our over direction happening through there. Okay, now we're going to leave that little section of the hairline out. Much easier coming this way. Glad I started on my hard side. Bit of cross checking in there. So now we've worked through our little shallow sections of layering through the top front sections and we've pulled all that back. We're just going to go through and make sure that we've blended that to our perimeter again. And I'm going to lift that quite a bit higher. Just so we can see where it's just not quite met the perimeter. And I'm using that same sliding technique, but very visual for how I want to blend that little middle part. Now that's our hairline part that we haven't really cut yet. It's actually re really beautiful diffused, Adam. You seem surprised. What, that it would look good diffused? Mm. Well, you don't know until you start working with 
hair and... I was surprised how cool it was when I mm. started It's got some beautiful natural movement in it. Does it feel a bit lighter, girls? It really does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work with uh, putting in our kind of long bangs, if you like, through here. So we're going to take a little triangle section. Now I like to use the eye when I'm sectioning for this. So whether I go to the middle of the eye or the end of the eye, not the eyebrow, because we know that they're not symmetrical. So, and we're taking it about how deep you go back is how much hair you want to include. Yeah, so if I come in through here and I go to the edge of the eye, I know that I'm going to have this much hair to play with in through there. If I come further back, that's how we add more hair. It's how we make it thicker and give it a little bit more push towards the front. So I think I'm going to go somewhere in between my first suggestion. And then I like to look at it and make sure, because some people have different sparseness of hair around that hairline. So I have been known to take one side further back if you need to actually add a bit more weight into one side of that little bang. Get rid of the rest of these locks. What we're going to do is we're going to stand on the opposite side to where we're cutting. We're going to get our clients to look at us. And we're going to get them to put their heads back and we're going to come through to the other side of the face. And I'm going to go to middle of the eye. So I'm kind of sizing myself up to her eyeball. And then I'm just going to come through there in a straight line. Come up a little bit higher, find that middle of the eye. I think that's going to be nice. Now what we're going to do is take a tiny little section in through here and we're going to take that as a little guideline up in through there. Got enough of our guide to see through here. We're going to swing to the other side, middle of the eye. I've got the guide at the top of my finger through here. We're going to let that swing open through there. Now, if you remember, we've obviously still got a little bit of hair in through here that we didn't take into that back section. All right, now we don't need to worry about this fringe because obviously it's going to be too short for us to worry about in our next section. But what we're going to do through here is decide on the layering that we want to see in the front. And with Kelsey, we talked about keeping that a bit longer and not having too many shorter pieces around the face, except for those bangs. And we're just going to kind of come to the other side of the face. So that finger's kind of lining up through the side of the face there. We're going to stop at the side of the face. And we're just going to blend that down to our baseline. Nice and simple. We're going to swing that round. I've got my guide in here. As soon as that drops out. And we actually have more hair on Kelsey's right hand side. We worked out before from the previous haircut. So we're going to end up cutting away a little bit more hair there. So there's our cut with our layers and our baseline and you can see there's not much weight within the layers which is why I really love this haircut and for long hair and for curly hair. But now I'm quite excited to see how Adam's actually going to style this. So I just want to jump in and use some matrix texture builder. So I'll get you to put your head back for me, Kelsey. I'd just like to look up at the roof. And I'd just like to put this in and around the hairline because it stops it from, basically what it does is it like keeps it up away from her face because we don't want it to just be smothering her face. Then we'll, then we'll just like maybe put a little bit in the root. And then something that we do as hairdressers a lot is we experiment when we use products. So this is a leave-in treatment on Break My Blonde. But I tell you what, it's an amazing finishing cream. I'm only using like a tiny bit. And again, this just goes in and around the hairline. And we just use that to just give that little bit of separation and poly. 
I'm really happy with my color. Like I think it, it just like at the beginning of this video, the thing that was important for me is Kelsey had never had color um, previously and I wanted it to be natural and gentle. I wanted it to be changed. I wanted it to feel like she's had a change, but I didn't want to take her from zero to 10 because all change makes people feel uncomfortable and that's not what we're here to do today. Come in here, you always stand off to the side, you weirdo. Why do you do your thing? I'm, I'm, doing my, I'm doing my thing like you did yours yesterday, styling my haircut. Yeah, it's and good today, to watch, fun to watch. And today I did yours. And, um, I love the shape. Um, I think you guys, like, you've been watching me cut hair for a, quite a long time and it's fair to say that um, Sam does it very different to me. And the point that I want to make is, Every time I do a video, I never think that the way I do things is the best way to do it. It's not about stopping doing what you do and doing it like me. It's about me showing you how I get to where I get to and the result is such. I said to Sam, I was watching her cut hair and I, I mean, I followed it, but it wasn't something that would be the way I do it. But you know what? Look at the result. So if you're watching this video and you're watching me cut hair and thinking, I don't do it like that, all I'm sharing for is to take a little bit of what I'm doing and add it to your bag of tools already. Like I'm gonna do that with Sam this week. Like she styled my haircut yesterday. I styled hers today. I learned a styling technique yesterday. I watched the way I cut hair and it makes me think differently. So these are meant to be thought provoking sort of videos that make us think about a different way of doing things. But at the end of the day, Chelsea looks amazing and that's what it's all about, getting to the right result. Yeah. Did good. And I think also like for a lot of us, you know, we've been in the industry for such a long time. It's just so good to be watching different people doing different things and taking just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yep. Like you say, you know, like just adding that fringe and trying it a different way and yep. just seeing the difference that you get out of it compared to how you normally do it. It's just, it's inspiring and it keeps you loving what you're doing for longer. It's true. And I think we should always remember, don't make it about yourself. Make it about your client. Yeah. They'll always come back. Thanks, Sam. Amen. High five, man. High five. That's good fun. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this video. You can go and follow Sam. I'm going to put her Instagram here. Kelsey may want to put hers there. I might put hers there if she wants. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do. And if you think you know someone who sharing this video with may help them, they may enjoy watching it for fun, they may be a hairdresser, please share. And um, until next time, it's bye from Sydney, Australia. See you guys.